thank you for tuning in. I hope your 2021 is off to a great start. I know it's been a while since I've updated, but I wanted to take the time uh, to share a project that I've been working on. This is Microsoft AirSim with a custom environment and Unreal Engine. And over the past six months, I've been working uh, to bring DroneBlocks integration into AirSim. And what that will allow is for users and students that want to learn the ins and outs of programming using blocks, they'll be able to do that uh, with the simulated environment. In addition to that, there's also Python integration. So AirSim, a project from Microsoft, it's open source and it's really powerful. And one thing that I wanna showcase in this video is the integration with uh, PX4 firmware set for hardware in the loop simulation. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and connected PixHawk via USB. I have my receiver bound to my Tyrannus QX7. I've gone ahead and armed, and I'll just go ahead and fly through this first obstacle that we created. It's this little ring. So we're just going to move forward, fly through the ring, and you can also toggle the keyboard for an FPV view, which is which is really cool. I, I'm a little close to my receiver, so I'm getting that telemetry message. But uh, this environment was actually developed by Epic Games, and I brought it in just to, to mess around with it, use all sorts of different flight modes. I'm in stabilize. Let me just turn around and see if you can notice. I'm going to toggle into altitude hold. So I'm in altitude hold now, and you might have seen the LED flash on PixHawk. So now I can just fly around using my pitch and roll stick, maintain altitude. And then let me just demonstrate, I have RTL set up. So I'll toggle that. It's taking control of the uh, simulated drone, which if you don't recognize that, that's the old uh, AR drone frame. So we're flying back to our starting location. At any point in time, this is the capability of AirSim. I can detach and then use my mouse to sort of, and WASD keys, like I'm in a game mode and actually follow the drone. Watch what it's doing. So I'm following it. It's going to ultimately end up back at its starting location. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to set this up. I'll actually put a link uh, to some of the documentation of these downloads. This is once again, a custom download that I put together using the AirSim plugin with a different environment. There are also a couple of others if you want to experiment. That's a demonstration of how all this works. You can test many different flight modes and I'm going to now dive into how we set this up. I'll put a link to this Git book below, but this covers uh, the documentation that I've been creating just to make this easier for myself in the future, as well as anyone else that wants to dive into this. So make sure that you refer to this and I'll be working to keep it up to date. One thing that I will point out is that I had to grab a older version of the PX4 firmware 1.9.2 for this to work. Unfortunately, the latest version at this time is 1.11.3 and I could not get hardware in the loop simulation working with AirSim. So keep that in mind. Here's a link. You'll download the version that is compatible with your PixHawk. I have an older PixHawk 2, so I'm pretty sure that was the PX4 V2 default. And let's go ahead and open up QGround Control. With QGround Control open, I'm going to go to Firmware and I will connect my PixHawk via USB. And by doing that, that will trigger the beginning of the installation process. So I'll go to Advanced Settings and then I'll select the custom firmware file, click OK. And this is the file that I referred to earlier. I downloaded from GitHub the PX4 1.9.2 version. We'll click open and the firmware is now being uploaded. Okay, so once that's done, PixHawk will reboot and QGround control should reconnect. Manual flight mode. So here we are in QGround control. I'm going to go to airframe. Now, since my parameters were already saved, this hill quadcopter X 
will be selected for you. It likely won't. You'll go in here and select Hill Quadcopter X and then click apply and restart. The next step in this process is binding your receiver and transmitter. Now, I'm not going to cover that in this video. I've talked about that a lot on the channel, but I am using the FreeSky QX7 and the RX4R receiver. So this assumes you know how to do the binding. You have it connected to PixHawk. We'll go to the radio tab and we'll click calibrate, click OK. First thing it tells us to lower our throttle stick all the way down. Now let me mention that I am using the default multi-rotor configuration in OpenTX. So that's T-A-E-R. Uh, T-A-E-R being throttle one, aileron two, ele elevator three, and rudder four. So that channel configuration. And I'm going to click next. It says move the throttle stick all the way up. So you can see it's going up in channel one. I'm going to move it down and leave it there. Now I'm going to move the yaw stick to the right and then to the left, that's channel four. Move the roll stick to the right, to the left, pitch stick all the way up, then all the way down, back to center. Now we're gonna move the transmitter switches. Now I have two switches here. Uh, channel five is a three position switch and then I also have a two position switch overriding channel five, and that will be our RTL. You can set this up, however, just set it up this way for the first test. As you get more advanced, uh, you'll be able to do different flight modes. So I'll click next to capture all the settings. So now we can see that as we're moving our sticks around, we can see the sliders move. The next step will be uh, to configure our flight modes. Now, once again, I've covered how to set up your different offsets and weights to do uh, various flight modes for different drones. But the default flight mode that I have for this setup is stabilized. Reject altitude control. The second is altitude highlighted. Reject auto land. We're going to now go to land. So these are the three uh, main things that we can test. Reject and altitude control. In an upcoming video, I'll cover some of these other flight modes we can test. Now, my two position switch, I'll override these first three flight Reject modes. Reject auto return to launch. And we'll be able to go to RTL. If you're not familiar with Q ground control, as you select it, it automatically saves that parameter. So you don't need to save that. That's everything we need to do on the configuration side of things. Now we're going to dive into the air sim part of the setup. There is a download link inside the git book and i'll encourage you just to start with the obstacle course environment once you click this you'll download it i'm going to show you the extracted contents of the zip file there's a launch file this is what i encourage you to run that will run the environment in a windowed manner so you don't have to see it full screen if you launch the executable directly it'll go full screen this will keep it small and contained and allow us to work with it so I'm going to launch it, then immediately I'll close it and I'll explain why. So when you launch AirSim, it will create a folder in your documents directory and inside of that folder, a settings file. So I'll open this real quick just so you can see the contents. It's very basic. And what we want to do is make some modifications to this to enable PX4 hardware in the loop simulation. So we'll go back to the document and you'll see here there's several uh, parameters that you want to put in this file. I encourage you to uh, just copy it. We'll go back. I'll paste it in. Make sure to save it. The next time that AirSim launches, you'll notice that it looks for a PX4 vehicle over the serial port and then a bunch of other parameters that I'll cover uh, in a future video. We're getting close to being able to do this test as it states in the documentation to make sure air sim is still closed we'll go ahead and power up our transmitter gone ahead and done that and then i'll connect pixock over usb we'll give this about 10 seconds just to boot now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and run the launch file can see some logging inside of that AirSim file. We wanted log messages to be on. So you can see that PX4 is communicating over the serial port COM5. 
you'll notice a got GPS lock. Make sure that you wait for the got GPS home location. And we'll see why here in just a second. So I'm going to do the standard arm sequence. I'm taking off and flying through this little obstacle course. I'll toggle into altitude mode. And that's holding well. Now let me just do an RTL and you'll see why we want to wait for that home location. That will allow us to do the return to launch sequence. It'll turn around, come home. You can always use F1 on your keyboard to see a lot of the different commands that you have available in AirSim. We actually have different cameras for segmentation and doing some cool computer vision stuff, which I haven't really dove into yet, but I hope to in the future. So really just wanted to walk through this with you. It took me a long time to determine firmware version, to get this environment set up, to get PX4 communicating. It was definitely worth it. I hope you guys are able to go through this experiment and I plan on sharing a lot more as it relates to integration with different types of code, especially drone blocks. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.